is Apollo Control, 119 hours, 17 minutes, ground elapsed time. Spacecraft position, 112,224 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity continuing to build up, now 5,478 feet per second. Looking now at entry interface time of 142 hours, 40 minutes, 42 seconds, which uh, according to the countdown clock is some 23 hours, 22 minutes from now. We've got a uh, mid-course correction burn of something less than two feet per second, which may or may not be done uh, some 18 hours, 22 minutes from now, uh, which is entry minus five hours. Cabin pressure aboard the Aquarius, holding around 4.7 pounds. Communication still rather scratchy uh, from time to time. Uh, spacecraft communicator Joe Kerwin requests the crew to give uh, amperage and voltage readouts on the battery charge that's going on and has been uh, underway since about 112 hours. At uh, 119 hours, 19 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 119 hours, 44 minutes, ground elapsed time, 22 hours, 56 minutes to entry interface, 400,000 feet, 17 hours, 56 minutes to uh, next mid-course correction if it is indeed performed. Cabin pressure in the lunar module holding at 4.94 pounds per square inch. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the cabin, one-tenth of a millimeter of mercury. And in the consumables for the lunar, lunar module, the uh, remaining lifetime of various consumables, total usable remaining water, 111.4 pounds. The present usage rate is two and a half pounds an hour. And... Uh, The time remaining at this present rate, 163 hours, uh, ground elapsed time, when the water would be defunct. Oxygen aboard, 33.43 pounds, using 0.26 pounds uh, per hour. This uh, oxygen would uh, run out at 247 hours. Electrical power, total usable remaining amp hours, 974, using about 17.9 amp hours or amps at the present time. This uh, would be exhausted at 173 hours ground elapsed time. Lithium hydroxide cartridges. Total remaining, uh, 180 hours. This is for the lunar module. Standard consumables does not include the lifetime on the portable life support systems.
At uh, 119 hours 46 minutes, ground elapsed time and standing by, this is Apollo Control. Houston, what? Over. 39.4, Are you really going up there and looking at them? That's what the meters say. Okay, we copy, Jim. Houston, over. Go ahead. Okay, Jim, uh, we show the uh, suit circuit relief valve is uh, is back in the auto position, and uh, we'd like to have it off for, uh, for, for good scrubbing, over. Jack, listen over. Right, uh, we're all set to copy. Oh, okay. This is Apollo Control at 120 hours, 20 minutes. Apollo 13 is 108,867 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 5,585 feet per second. We're, we're drawing uh, an average of uh, 18 uh, to 19 amps from the descent stage batteries now as we continue to charge the uh, battery A in the command module. Lunar module cabin temperature uh, 51. to close the power amplifier circuit breaker. And on panel 12, we'd like you to move the voice function switch to voice, over. Okay, Aquarius Houston, how do you read? Read you loud and clear. Okay, and you're real good. It's a it's a pleasure not to have all that noise. Uh, let me tell you what I want to do, Jim. Uh, as I said, we're not going to give you detailed procedures now. What we expect to have for you shortly 
uh, our, our procedures, which we'll try and get up to you in the following form. Uh, first, we'll have a timeline, sort of a flight plan thing, which will have the times of all the major events and any configurations, uh, switch settings, and so forth, which are peculiar to our configuration and which, therefore, you won't find in the checklist. This, for instance, will be true of the way we power up the, the command module. And uh, second, of course, we'll have any red lines to the checklist so that you can enter the, uh, the, the checklist where possible to, to perform functions. And the, the timeline will simply refer you to the checklist when that's appropriate. Okay? Okay, sounds good. Uh, you're going to give me an overall timeline now, I think, is that right? That's a firm. I'm going to first of all just uh, uh, quickly run through the uh, the times of the uh, of the major events, and then we'll go back and fill in some of the details. Okay, uh, entry interface is at 142 hours and 40 minutes. Six and a half hours, roughly, prior to that, or at about 136.10, we'll uh, start this whole thing going by uh, uh, applying IMU heater power by uh, checking the uh, CMRCS temperatures and preheating the CMRCS if required, and uh, we suspect we'll probably want to do that. Uh, we'll have detailed procedures up for it later. At about six hours prior to EI, or about 136.40, uh, we will commence uh, powering up the, uh, the LEM, powering up the AGS using the modified uh, LEM DIPS RCS 30-minute checklist, which you have used for the previous mid-course. Uh, then shortly, just before five hours prior to EI, or at about 137.40, we'll want you in the attitude for a LEM AGS body axis alignment using the Earth Terminator like we did before. And uh, as soon as we have that, we'll perform MCC-7, which looks like uh, now about a two foot per second burn, or about 15 seconds of uh, RCS. And I'm told that it's, uh, it's down to one and a half now. So it's comfortably within the RCS margin. Okay, when we do that, we'll uh, immediately start the maneuver to the uh, service module jettison attitude, which will be in plane since we're jettisoning it earlier than we usually do. We don't need and don't want the out of plane component. Uh, so it'll be in plane with the uh, service module pointed back out along the radius vector. Oh. We will uh, then commence to uh, get the command module ready for service module SEP, including uh, command module RCS checkout and a hot fire. And at uh, approximately four hours and 30 minutes prior to EI, or 138.10, we'll jettison the service module. Uh, we'll pitch the limb up until we acquire the service module in the uh, hat, try and get some photographs, but we're not going to fool around with LEM translation maneuvers or pictures because we don't want to fool up your, follow up your flight path angle at that time. Okay, that gives us two hours to uh, more or less uh, open time here to uh, finish up if we're late on that, to uh, run over the checklists uh, and prepare for powering up the command module. We're going to start the command module full power up at uh, EI minus two hours and 30 minutes, or 14010 GET. We'll get the uh, computer on the line, we'll get the IMU up, we'll uh, start up linking the interstate vectors and so forth, and uh, aligning the uh, command module platform. Uh, at about one hour and 30 minutes at the latest, giving us an hour to do this command module stuff, we will start the maneuver to the LEM jettison attitude. Uh, We'll then start to uh, close out the lamp. Of course, we hope to have our stowage all configured way before this. Uh, we'll close the hatch to a, a pressure integrity check, and at uh, EI minus one hour, or 141 hours and 40 minutes, we'll jettison the lamp. As uh, soon as we do that, <coughs> you can start the maneuver to the entry attitude. When you're there, do a sextant star check, take down the optics, and uh, at that point, we'll be giving you your final entry pad. You can initialize the EMS, and you will essentially be right back on the checklist at that point. There's one uh, one little difference from your nominal entry. Uh, you're a little bit earlier in the morning, so it's, uh, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be nighttime.
time when you get the eye. However, we're, we're fortunate enough to have the moon in a perfect position for a uh, horizon check. We'll give you a moon check instead of a horizon check, and you can track it right down to moonset, which is going to be an EI roughly minus three minutes. And uh, that's it for the quick timeline. Do you have any questions right now? Uh, don't believe so, Joe, right now. We'll have to look over the timeline uh, and uh, think about it for a little bit. Okay, uh, real fine. We're ready to uh, to talk in uh, some more detail about the alignment procedures, the uh, CM power-up procedures, and so forth, but why don't we give you a few minutes to, to digest what you've already heard. Two questions so far on uh, heating up the CMRCS. Uh, we assume that's left power, and we assume that we're going to have to power up both uh, CM buses, right? Okay, Jim. Uh, I didn't want to talk about that because we're uh, we're not quite ready to uh, to recommend a uh, a procedure. Uh, we can't power up the CMRCS per the normal checklist on the LIMPAR because we haven't got quite enough amps. Uh, it may be that we'll want you to uh, to heat, uh, to do the preheat uh, one ring at a time, and we're looking at that. Uh, another possibility is that we, that we may want to take down LIMPAR at that time, do the preheat, and then go back to LIMPAR on, uh, until we have to take it down finally. Over. Okay, understand. Second question, uh, when uh, we finish MCC-7, uh, that maneuver to SM jet attitude will be angles given to us by you using the ag aligned ball, right? That's affirmative. Uh, uh, once we get that ag's aligned and, and get a time hack on it, uh, uh, the, uh, the good uh, people down here will be able to give us ag's, ag's eight ball attitudes for the uh, service module separation attitude and for the command module alignment attitude, which we are going to pass you up a, uh, a, a moon-sun P-52 type alignment. We'll have AGS 8-ball attitudes for those, and we'll be able to uplink to the command module once we get the computer up uh, a preferred refs mat, which, is, uh, which will be uh, identical to the, uh, to the LEM attitude uh, at the time of the burn. And uh, we'll go into details on that later. Okay. Just stand by one, I'll continue. Well done. consideration of, uh, of what kind of maneuvers to let you do to uh, photograph the LEM, I mean the s service module. We, we consider it uh, quite low priority. Uh, the feeling is that uh, it, it'll be real nice to get pictures of the service module, but they're not required uh, for our, uh, our troubleshooting program. Uh, as far as the, uh, the uh, 
uh, attitude control authority and so forth. Uh, we'll get you more detailed word on that later. We are working it. It appears that uh, using the ACA instead of the TTCA after service module jet will give you uh, excellent attitude uh, control authority, and that's what we recommend. Okay, I'm also going to use an at, an at hold uh, uh, configuration to keep the uh, attitude, so uh, turn the uh, left jet attitude. That's a firm. Uh, we, uh, we are probably going to recommend a tight bit a tight dead band ags attitude hold for that. Okay. be a sexton star check, uh, uh, Jim. Uh, it, it really depends on how good that platform is that we get. We expect it to be plenty good enough for a sexton star check. While we're on okay. that subject, Jim, uh, I want to mention one thing to, uh, to Jack. Uh, as I said, this uh, CSM alignment procedure we're, we're going to recommend is a, uh, is a moon sun. And uh, there are sun filters uh, stowed. They're stowed in, uh, in compartment R1. Uh, however, they're for the, uh, for the telescope only, of course, and not the, not the sextant. One is for the long eye relief piece, uh, the other for the, uh, for the normal eye piece. And, uh, if he has any questions about that, uh, we'll be glad to talk about it. Okay. And uh, oh, because uh, it'll be too late to do much about a, uh, a hatch integrity check if it fails, you'll want us to uh, have our suits on sometime during this period. Okay, uh, Jim, uh, we're laying for you on that one. Uh, it's a subject we wanted to, uh, to bring up with you. Uh, we've been considering it, and our feelings are, uh, of course, it's up to you, but as we see the pros and cons, uh, you just put your finger on the pro. Uh, we do a hatch integrity check shortly before EI minus one hour, and uh, if we bust it, uh, you'd have a, a hard time scrambling into the suits. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the disadvantages of wearing the suits are that they uh, uh, they might slow you down considerably, not, not even counting the time to don them. And uh, someone has even raised the concern that such and such a period of time in the suits, uh, you might get warm, and we might have to power up the uh, suit loop to ventilate the suits, and we don't particularly want to do that because it costs quite a bit of power. Uh, consequently, our recommendation was going to be that we not wear the suits, since we have uh, no reason to believe that uh, that the integrity check would show us anything but a uh, but a slightly increased leak rate, and uh, we can certainly hack that. What do you think, over confidence in the hatch as long as it goes in and it locks in smoothly. I see no reason why uh, why we need the suits. And uh, one thing we're going to do uh, during our spare time is to uh, is to practice putting that hatch on uh, to make sure we get it on and locked. Okay, real good. And with that precaution, uh, I think we can concur on, uh, on that decision. And that's all the questions we had about the timeline you gave us. Okay, uh, let me uh, take a check here and see if there's anything anybody else wants to input to you right now. Aquarius Houston. Go ahead. Raj, uh, one detail that I thought uh, you ought to know about the uh, service module jet is that we're going to recommend a, uh, a push-pull maneuver. Uh, that is, in the attitude I described, uh, we'll want you to... Uh, uh, go half a foot per second plus X on the uh, LEM, then jettison the service module, then go half a foot per second minus X, which will be less time because you're suddenly a heck of a lot lighter. 
Over. Okay, I understand you want me to go half a foot per second plus X. Cancel uh, a service module, then go half a second, uh, half a foot per second minus X. That's a firm. We think that'll give you plenty of separation and also uh, will be a slow enough rate so that you'll have a chance to get some photos. Houston. Go ahead. Okay, one more thing we want to update you on uh, with, uh, with a little detail. Uh, as we told you, the uh, SM SEP attitude was in plane. The uh, LEM jet attitude will be uh, more similar to an, a normal uh, service module SEP attitude. That is, it'll be LEM up out the radius vector and 45 degrees right out of plane toward the south. We uh, are going to recommend that uh, Prior to jet, the configuration be with the LEM overhead hatch closed, with the vent valve open, and we'll uh, jet with the tunnel pressurized. Over. Okay, Joe, understand that the uh, LEM jet attitude will be similar to uh, service module normal jettison, which will be up and out of plane. And, uh, as soon as I finish maneuvering the left jet attitude, I'll scramble up and close the left hatch, making sure the vent valve is open, and uh, then uh, we'll vent it, we'll uh, jettison with the tunnel pressurized. Uh, that's affirmative. And Deke says, don't forget to close the command module hatch on your way in. I'm always scared that Jack will have it closed before I get up there. <laughs> Okay, Jim, uh, I think that's about all we've got for you right now. Uh, whenever you feel like uh, uh, you don't have any more questions at the moment, uh, we'd like you to uh, reconfigure uh, for down voice backup, uh, and we'd like you to, to do that to, to move the voice function switch to down voice backup as usual. But instead of pulling the circuit breaker, we'd like you to throw the power amp switch to off. Okay, uh, Joe, I have one more question here. Uh, if we get a little bit ahead of time on the uh, command module full power up after we get the service module, I'd like to go to left jet attitude early and make sure we get that part squared away and uh, sit there for a while before left jet at one hour. Now, uh, will we be using a left power up to that time? Uh, there's two uh, cables which we'll probably have to disconnect on the way up through the tunnel if we're still going to use left power. That's affirmative. Let me get word on, uh, on when we expect to uh, go off limp power. Aquarius Houston. Go ahead. Roger. Uh, we uh, expect to go off LEM power at the time we start powering up the CSM, or about minus two and a half hours. That is not a hard number, and we'll be updating you on it. As far as going to the uh, LEM jet attitude, uh, that's completely permissible. As soon as you have a powered up command module and a satisfactory platform, uh, you can go there immediately. We're giving you a maximum of, uh, of one hour uh, just for grins. Over. Okay, fine, and uh, that will uh, be a lamp maneuver, I, I assume, because we lost the service module, so no strain there. Not firm. Oh, and uh, Jack would like to know what entry angle the mid course 7 will uh, give us. Oh, uh, 
uh, uh, it'll put us right in the middle of the corridor, Jim. Okay. 6.50 degrees. And uh, Jim Houston, uh, I guess uh, as a last item, we expect that it'll take us about an hour to uh, update your checklists and your timelines uh, sometime later on today. And uh, uh, we'd just like you to consider that. Uh, I expect it'll be three or four hours before we have all that stuff ready. Okay, we'll be standing by for that. And now uh, power amplifier switch is going to go off, and then I'll be going to down voice backup. Okay. This is Apollo Control at 120 hours, 47 minutes. Flight Director Glenn Lenny of the black, black Team is on his way to the MSC Auditorium for a change of shift news conference. Glenn Lenny is on his way to the MSC Auditorium for a news conference. Houston. This is Apollo Control. The change of shift news, news conference will begin momentarily. Of course, Houston, go ahead. The Capcom now is astronaut Vance Brand. Hi, Rod, Jim. We're receiving you now. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I'd like your call, but I guess we had the uh, ground uh, switches down there. Yeah, we lost the uh, lock for a little while there, Jim. Well, uh, good day. Uh, could you give us... Uh, Battery A voltage reading, please, and battery charger current, as you have been doing. Okay, man. We're by. Okay. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, both. Uh, 39.5 amp 1.25. Uh, Roger, copy 39.5 and 1.25. Thank you. This is Apollo Control. The Neil Armstrong News Conference will begin momentarily in the MSC Auditorium. Aquarius Houston, over. Aquarius, here, go ahead, Houston. Say, Jim, could you give us another reading on the battery A voltage and bat charger current in the CSM, please? Bat app coming up. Okay. And uh, sometime when you have some time to copy, I have a... Uh, an entry stowage list to give you, which uh, specifies which equipment will be moved uh, between vehicles before uh, before splashdown. Okay, I'll be able to copy that. Okay. Say again, Amps. Roger, copy. Thank you.
Okay, man, we're ready to call her to uh, copy the uh, story. Okay, Jim. Now, uh, I'll give it to you in two parts. The first is LEM to co command module equipment transfer. And the second part will be the reverse uh, command module to LEM equipment transfer. And both parts represent deltas from the launch stowage. And here comes the first list, LEM to command module equipment transfer. First, DSEA, and I'll give you the storage location too. That goes in R13. Oh, man, what was that again? Uh, DSEA, that's a recorder, in, uh, will go in the command module. It's recommended you stow it in R13. Over. Okay, the BFEA, that's the recorder, uh, will be stowed in I-13. That's affirmed. Next, LEM flight data file. That will go in R1, R2, and R3. Next, three PPKs in A8. Okay. Okay, 16 millimeter and 70 millimeter exposed film in R13. two hoses. Next, two 70 millimeter Hasselblad cameras and stow these in B6 in the empty LIOH volume. Okay, next, black and white TV camera. And recommend stow that on top of A7 and A11 in decontamination bag. Next, flag kit, storage location A8. Next, LEM fecal bags used uh, R9 uh, waste management system chute. Okay, that's the first list, Jim. Okay. And if you want to read that one back, why then I'll I'll give you the second one. This is the LEM to command module transfer. And this is the Delta from the launch story.
Okay, that's uh, firm, Jim. Uh, we had a lot of noise, and uh, we didn't get the middle part, but uh, I, I think uh, that's fairly, should be fairly clear to you, and uh, don't bother with the readback of, of that that we missed unless you have any doubts. And then I'll, uh, if you write a copy, I'll give you the second list. Okay. Okay. This is CM to LEM equi equipment transfer. Cabin fan filter and bag. And that in the LEM should go in the ISA. Okay, next, decontamination bags, except for the ones used to wrap camera, should go in the ISA. Okay, two LCGs, if you don't have them on already, uh, to the ISA. you wouldn't have one because you're cold enough already. That's right. Okay, and finally, four LIOH cans, uh, the ones used in the LEM, and those can go in the jettison bag in the LEM. Okay, a couple of notes. After loading the ISA, recommend secure it to the right-hand restraint system. And uh, secure the jettison bag to the pliss on the floor. And that's all. Houston, Houston, over. Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, Jim, would you give us PCM to high bit rate? We think maybe we might be able to lock up on your high bit rate now. Over. Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, Jim, we're getting it intermittently. Uh, we think we might get it steady and improve circuit margins. If you would, in addition, on panel 16, open the primary power amp circuit breaker. And I'll give you the next step in a minute. Okay, primary power amp is open. Okay, and uh, on panel 12, power amp to primary. Roger. Price 13. 
go ahead, uh, Houston. Or rather, Houston. Uh, Jim, uh, looks like we got, got a lock on, which is uh, going to improve our uh, data flow here. Only thing is we'll probably uh, lose data and, uh, and uh, probably voice, too, during a portion of each uh, roll. So you might expect that. The other thing is if anyone has on uh, any biomed, would you switch your your switch to uh, your biomed switch to that position? I uh, understand the first uh, man, and uh, no one has on any biomed. Uh, okay. And, uh, Jack are uh, maneuvering things around right now, and uh, mine is the uh, long since uh, the part of the thing. Okay. Copy. understandable. One guy's on the leash, huh? This is Apollo Control at 122 hours, 24 minutes. We plan to take another telemeter to look at the command module before too long. Read out the thermal parameters. Apollo 13 is 102,019 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 5,819 feet per second. Current load uh, now is about 19 amps. Cabin pressure is 4.98 pounds per square inch. Temperature 52 degrees. Aquarius Houston. Uh, Jim, when you uh, get finished moving your stowage around and uh, it's uh, convenient. We'd like to terminate the battery charge for a little while to bring up the CM uh, TM so we could take a look at the temperatures again like we did yesterday. Uh, advise that <clears throat> right now on your batteries you have 111 amp hours and uh, eventually we hope to have them up, peaked up to about 116. Uh, one other point, we we can either uh, read that uh, procedure up again, which uh, involves cranking up the telemetry, or if Jack still has it, we can use his notes, And uh, but I have one or two changes to, to make on them. Over. OK, I understand that uh, you'll want us to uh, terminate battery charge for a while and crank up the CM, uh, TM to read our temperatures. And uh, you have a few changes to Jack's checklist, and uh, I'll turn the card over here to Jack shortly. Uh, as soon as he's finished, and uh, we'll get a lot of Okay, we'll be standing by for a while. There's no hurry on it. Stand by one. You're speeding up, I think. Jim, we have you 101,000 miles out, and your velocity is 5848. Starting to speed up. Okay, thank you. Sure enough. Okay, 
Houston uh, Aquarius. Go ahead, Jack. Okay, Vance, uh, Jim said that you want to terminate battery charge on uh, battery A. That's affirmed, Jack. Uh, request to, uh, before you terminate it, uh, get the usual readouts on uh, voltage and current. And we'd also like a time of termination. And understand you have the termination procedure. Is that affirmed? Okay, that's affirmed. Uh, stand by. Let, let me just uh, make sure I've got everything here before I go off on a tangent. Okay, Jack, and uh, your t your battery charge termination procedure uh, remains unchanged. But uh, when we go to power up the CM and look at your TM, we have a couple of uh, additional steps. Okay, Vance, I, uh, I do have the procedure for stopping the battery charge. Do you want me to copy this procedure now, or do you want me to come back and give you the whole damn time and uh, a after I complete this uh, termination? Okay, just uh, just uh, uh, give us the the volts and amps just before you start the termination of the procedure. And uh, understand you you say you have the the charge, the procedure for taking the charge off. Is that affirmed? Uh, that's affirmed. Okay. And just give us a hack on uh, the time. Do you want to review it at all? Uh, negative, uh, unless uh, you want me to. I'll tell you what, I could run through it very quickly just to verify that uh, we're getting started off on the correct path there. Yeah, okay, their first first four or five uh, things uh, that I have is panel uh, uh, bat charge off on panel three, AC inverter two off, panel five main bus tie bat AC on, panel 250 CB bat A power entry post landing open, panel 275 is inverter power two main B open, and then the, just to go ahead and reverse the position of the switches and circuit breakers uh, that I started out with, and these don't have to be in reverse order. Is that uh, Charlie? Raj, that's, uh, that's Charlie. Uh, have at it. Okay, we'll get a bolt and amps right now. Okay. Okay, Ben, the bolt and amps. 3, 9, 4, amp 1.25. Okay, Jack, we copy that. Incidentally... Okay, we're going up to Trevor. Quiet, then. Uh, never mind, Jack. I'll bring this up later when you finish the procedure. Understand you've been doing some spring house cleaning, uh, moving storage around up there. Well, you wouldn't believe this limb right now. It's nothing but bags from floor to ceiling. Hey, uh, that brings up a question. Uh, we were wondering where you guys plan to stow the probe and drogue. Uh, it occurred to us that one possibility was to stow it in the limb down uh, about where the LMP normally stands. Uh, underneath the I ISA, or uh, perhaps you have a better idea. Over. Yeah, I do, man. Uh, uh, on the lamp, but I thought uh, maybe we ought to start where the CDR stands, like that. Okay, uh, 
I can tell it. You're just getting uh, getting that one over because uh, Jim just got off the loop. Okay, sleeping. Now that's uh, that's actually where we uh, normally uh, had been throwing it for a normal uh, limb jet. Okay, and uh, hey, we just w we'll uh, record that and uh, figure that you'll stow the probe and drogue over in the where the CDR stands. We have a a change to this uh, equipment transfer list that I just read up to Jim. Uh, why don't you make a note of this one item? Uh, forget about the limb. Stand by, stand by one. Okay. I think uh, Jack hauled off the uh, piece of paper with that, uh, all that on it. Uh, why don't you hold it so uh, Jack is done uh, securing the battery charge. Okay. And Fred, request uh, PCM on low bit rate now. Okay. Yeah, there was one piece of uh, flight data uh, that uh, we needed that we didn't bring along this time. What was that? It's a big book with a lot of just plain old blank pages in it. Yeah, when you when you get off nominal, why you just need scratch paper, don't you? Yeah. Okay, uh, man. So I got the storage list now. Okay, I gave you two lists. Jack, uh, uh, and Jack said he's uh, completed uh, the uh, securing the battery charge now. Okay, and uh, we're recording the time that that was complete. Uh, you have two lists there. One is LEM to CM equipment transfer. The second list is a reverse. Uh, request to scratch the last item on the first list. Uh, which is uh, returning used bags back to the CM. Okay. Uh, we didn't have any of those, so it didn't pose any problem anyway. Okay. Okay, ma'am, uh, where is it back on? Okay, Jack, I understand you uh, completed the uh, securing the battery charge. Now, uh, if you're ready to copy, Jack, I'd like to give you the, the two changes that we have to the power-up for the TM procedure of it. Okay, stand by one. Okay. Okay, Vance, uh, you say you have some changes in the procedure that I used before to get telemetry and check out the CFM. Yeah, that's correct, Jack. Uh, they're pretty simple. Uh, about halfway through the procedure, uh, we have a step on panel three, which is power amp high. We'd like to change that to power amp low. Copy power amp And the next change, Jack, is panel 275. Scratch the step CB main B, bat B, close. Bat bus B, close. Okay, you want to delete the step CB main B, bat bus B, close. Right. Uh, as you know, we're going to... Uh, 
do this on limb power. So uh, this reflects that. Okay, real fine. Okay, and have at it. We, uh, we'd like to have the TM up for about five or 10 minutes to look at the, the data from the CM, look at your temperatures, et cetera. And after that, we'll go back to charging the battery again. And the charge will probably go till around GET 126. Okay. Uh, do you want the same readouts for me uh, that I gave you before? Uh, that's uh, affirmative, Jack. And uh, just to make sure that, that there's no uh, uh, mistaking the procedure, it starts out for the back out part, panel three, power amp off, transponder off, AC inverter two off, then goes to panel 250, et cetera. Okay. Okay, going back up into the refrigerator. Hey, I, th I thought it was the bedroom. Well, uh, it's got a new name now because it's about 30 degrees cooler. Roger, returning to the deep freeze. He is on the noise list where you have us putting uh, black and white TV camera on top of A7 in an A4 decontamination bag. I was wondering uh, if it would be possible or if there would be any problem in putting it into B6 along with the 270mm Hasselblad camera. Uh, Jack, I don't think there will be any problem uh, if you can get it in, but uh, let us get work that and get back with you, okay? Uh, all right. I was just thinking, I'm trying to get as much weight as possible down in uh, there uh, in that uh, LED. Uh, we have no SRCs, and then our waste tank is, uh, you know, uh, rather depleted. I think it's about down to 40% or so. So I'm trying to get as much L over D as I can, and any heavy items we can get down there, uh, I'd be greatly appreciated if you bring it to our attention. Okay, we copy that, and, and uh, we owe you an answer on uh, your last question. Okay, and I'm in work. Uh, going to give you some telemetry. Okay. This is Apollo Control at 123 hours, 2 minutes. Apollo 13 is less than 100,000 miles from Earth now. 99,868 nautical miles. Velocity, 5,897 feet per second. Uh, Quarries, Houston, we're receiving CSM data now. We just lost data on uh, a quart on uh, Jack. Would you have him select the best Omni, please? Okay. This is Apollo Control at 123 hours, 9 minutes. We're using LEM power for this command and service module telemetry check. And the current's up now to uh, 24 amps. Houston. Hi, go ahead, Pete. Uh, Fred, we have enough data. I uh, recommend that uh, Jack take off uh, the TM and uh, 
power back down again using his back out procedure. Just uh, let us know when he does it. Okay. And after that, we'll start the battery charge and uh, we'll have to know when he starts that. Okay, he's starting to back out now. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, what we're all gonna read out on uh, what the cabin temp was up there? Yeah, we're, we're getting uh, 45 to 46 degrees. Yeah, it's uh, kind of a cold winter day up there, isn't it? Is it snowing in the command module yet? Is it uh, what then? Is it snowing in there yet? Oh, it's snowing. No, uh, no not quite. Uh, the windows are in pretty bad shape, and uh, I guess uh, the service module uh, will be trying to shoot out of the limp uh, windows. Uh, every window in the command module is covered with water droplets. It take a lot of stuff and uh, get those uh, cleared off. Roger, understand. Deke says to tell you you'll have some time on the beach in Samoa to thaw out after this cold experience. some uh, procedures in work, uh, and, and I've seen them, Fred. Uh, I think pretty soon we'll be shooting them up to you to specify which cameras and uh, settings. But that, that sounds pretty close. Okay, uh, you might uh, let them know that uh, they had thought of it, that we got this uh, lunar surface sequence camera board, which has its own battery pack set up and uh, shoot quite a few pictures with, and uh, that could also be used for this. Uh, Raj, uh, I know we are planning to use that camera, among others. Okay. Okay, Houston Aquarius. Uh Jack has uh, backed out of uh, power up the PM, and now he's uh, proceeding to uh, restart battery charge on uh, bat A. Okay, real good, Fred. We copy. Okay, and we're charging uh, battery A now. Uh, Roger, charging battery A, Fred. And Fred, uh, request now first reading of voltage, bat A voltage, and, uh, and charge your current over. Okay, Vance, I can give it to you. I read it right after I started it. Uh, bat A voltage was 39.4, and the current had jumped up to 1.4. Okay, 39.4 and 1.4. Thanks, Jack. Okay, how about you ready for some other readouts that you wanted there? Ready to copy. Okay, bat C, 37.0. Pyro A, 37.0. Pyro B, 37.0. SPS helium pressure, 3400. 
at nitrogen A and B just for throwing it in for kick. Two two zero zero and two four zero zero respectively. And the injector temperature stand by. This is the sun went down. Okay, the injector temperature five Charlie three point nine five dog three point two. Alpha, 3.6. Six Baker, 3.9. Six Charlie, 3.5. Six Dog, 3.4. The battery manifold pressure, 1.4. Okay, we copy all that, Jack. Thank you. Okay. You'll figure you're going to be charging uh, that A to about 126. Uh, Roger, about uh, 126.30 is an estimate, Jack. Okay, and you figure it'll be fully charged then, huh? Uh, yeah, that's right. We'll have all the batteries up to about 116 amps hours. That's better than 99, huh? You're right. How did all the systems work on the bunker, Dan? I didn't hear any complaints, but just a minute. Let me uh, make a detailed check. Houston. Hi, go ahead. Uh, Jack, it's a general statement. It looks like temperatures have uh, cooled off uh, in the ballpark of uh, six to eight degrees cooler than what they were yesterday. Looks like <clears throat> everything has uh, still been tolerance, but we're working up a detailed sheet of temperatures to send up to you for your interest. Go ahead, of course. Okay, uh, Vance, uh, Joe brought up uh, the alignment at uh, EI minus 2 plus 30. Uh, were you going to set up uh, or have a discussion about that uh, later on? That's correct, uh, Jack. We just about have uh, procedures in hand, detailed checklist type procedures to send up to you. In other words, a timeline with reference to uh, entry checklist and any changes in the entry checklist. So if you have a few pages of scratch paper, why I think we'll have that to you within an hour. Okay, I'll be standing by. Uh, one other thing, Jack, you still with me? Yes, go ahead. Uh, our storage people have uh, tried out this uh, black and white TV camera into B6 idea. And they say even with the lens off, they can't get it in. So I'll still recommend that it be stowed uh, where we had it on the list. Uh, that's A7. Okay, no problem. Corey's Houston. Uh, go ahead. Jack requests another Voltage readout on uh, bad A and current on bad charger. Okay, Vance, the uh, volt 39.3, amp 1.3. Roger, copy 39.3 and 1.3.
Aquarius Houston, over. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, Jack, uh, looks like the LEM suit relief valve has been uh, bumped to auto again. Requested. Okay. Closed, over. In work. Okay. Okay, they say it looks good. Corey okay. Houston. Uh, go ahead. Okay, Jack, we need another one of those uh, voltage amps readouts, and maybe we'll get off here back for a little while. Well, don't worry about it. I'd like to have you talk to us. Volt and amps coming up. Okay. shift he's on but uh, he's uh, he comes in later I guess actually all the shifts are morning shifts to us say that one again the sun is always shining all, all the shifts are morning shifts to us because the sun is always shining that was a short night Just for curiosity's sake, uh, we still uh, holding the entry angle of 6.25. Okay, Jack, we're going to go ahead. Okay, Jack, uh, right now it's, we're told it's uh, closer to 6, and but they'd like to track it some more. It looks like your next mid course will be in the order of 2 to 3 foot per second. This is Apollo Control at 123 hours, 48 minutes. Apollo 13 is 97,232 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 5,996 feet per second. We're 18 hours, 52 minutes away from entry at 400,000 feet. And if the crew is satisfied with the integrity of the uh, command module tunnel hatch, they will make this reentry unsuited. Go ahead, Jack. Okay, uh, we're still in good shape as far as water goes on the left. Okay, we copy. Okay, have you run out of uh, CM drinking water yet, Check. Oh, no, we got plenty of uh, uh, drinking water. I think the, the one 
I don't have any idea what the surge tank pressure is. Uh, Okay, it's uh, seven fifty. It's seven fifty, Jack. Houston. All right, go ahead, man. Okay, uh, stand, stand by one, Jack, and uh, we'll give you an indication of uh, how the water situation in the limb is, which uh, is your question, right? Okay, well, I guess what I was really asking is if you'd have any violent objections if we filled uh, uh, two drink bags from limb water rather than repressurize the surge tank. Okay, stand by on that. Also, Jim, also Jim sleep up there, and uh, we didn't want to bother him either. Okay, we understand. And uh, Jack, we'll be uh, changing uh, stations in one minute, so we may have a temporary dropout and come. Okay. Corius Houston. Okay, Vance, go ahead. Live clear. Okay, Jack, uh, we're going to bargain with you on this one. Uh, instead of two, would uh, wish that you'd just get one one bag full. That uh, shouldn't do any harm. Uh, however, okay. we're, we're not all that fat on water that we want to uh, do any drinking out of the limb uh, as a regular thing after this one bag. So uh, would you let us know when you uh, get the water out and give us a mark on it so we can watch the TM over. Okay, uh, Fredo's about to withdraw the water now. Okay, Vince, uh, we withdraw the, oh, about eight ounces of water. Okay, Jack. How's it taste? Uh, good. It's not quite as gaseous as that in the expand mode. This is Apollo Control, 124 hours, 15 minutes. Apollo 13 now, 95,638 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity, 6,057 feet per second. Temperature in the limb cabin now reading 51 degrees. Pressure 4.98 pounds per square inch. The carbon dioxide partial pressure, two tenths of a millimeter of mercury. Apollo 13, Houston, or rather Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead. Hey, Jack, we need another reading. Volts and amps. Okay, coming up. Uh, Vance, you won't believe this, but Fredo says it's 39.4 and 1.245. Okay, there he comes, recording those numbers. Charlie Dumas this time. Oh. Not changing very fast, is it? Uh, how far out are we? Oh, 
Okay, uh, 95 3 and 6068 on uh, velocity for Fido. Okay. Bill Stovall. Thank you.